Here we are in section 5.5 with numbers 13 through 18. Factor the following. If non-factorable, label as prime. All righty. So we're going to keep all five of these uh, possible ways of doing it. First method that we ran into was greatest common factor. So let's double check this one. Anything? Nope. That guy doesn't have an X, and that only has X's. So we definitely don't have that. So um, let's... Check how many terms we have. We have four terms, so we go over here to method number two, chop that guy in half. What can we pull out of here? An x squared. We're left with x plus three. What can we pull out of this half? And it looks like we have a negative four that we can pull out, and that is x plus three. Now note when we pull out that negative sign, we are left with a positive. Hey, that's lucky because those two things right there, whoosh, are now the same thing. So we now have x squared minus 4 times x plus 3. Now we need to double check this factor right here and we note that it is a difference of a square and a square. That's special case number 5 difference of squares. So this actually becomes x plus 2 x minus 2 and then this x plus 3 sits on the side. Now it is completely factored. Number 14 uh, again, let's check number one. Let's put a star by that to remind us always check the greatest common factor first, and there's nothing there. So we have one, two, three, four terms. So we're here in method two. Um, let's divide this up, and we ha can pull out an r squared there, and we get r plus one. And we can pull out a negative four here, and we get r plus one. Again, pulling out a minus sign change that minus to a plus and now we can pull out that r plus one in both places pull it out that way or we could pull out the other way i guess if we wanted but we're left with r squared minus four and r plus one. Oh, look just like number 13 we are left with hey look at that that's a difference of a square and a square which means this will break up into r plus two r minus 2 and r plus 1. And there we go, number 14. Number 15. Ooh, this is looking kind of, that's a lot of x's and y's there. Well, luckily we're going to start off by, oh look at that, method number 1, pulling out the greatest common factor. Pull out an x and a y and do we get any numbers with that? Yeah, we can pull out a 2. There we go. We are left with x squared plus 2x, yep, no y there, minus 15. And look at what we have left. This is now a trinomial with leading coefficient 1, so that is method 3. So we, this is a nice one, this is the, the quick one where we have x and x, and all we got to do is fill this with two numbers that times to negative 15, so that could be a 1 and a 15 or a 3 and a 5, and we need to make sure they add to 2. So a plus 5 and a minus 3 will do it. So a plus 5 and a minus 3 will do it. And there we go. 2xy times that manga. And we got it. All right, number 16. Ooh, this one's a big one. Look at those numbers. No, It's a good thing we're going to pull out this greatest common factor first and see if we can take this down just a bit. Looks like the greatest common factor here is going to be um, 4. I think a 2 goes into everything. A 4 will go into everything, definitely. But what about, I think that's all we got is a 4. So let's pull it out. We're left with 4z cubed plus 12z squared plus 9z plus, what is that, 27, I think? I think so. Well, what's left? We have one, two, three, four terms, so we're looking to see if we can group. So let's group these guys right here, split it in half, and see what we can pull out of the first two. We get 4z squared. We're left with z plus 3. And here we have, we can pull out that positive sign and it looks like between a 9 and a 27 and 9 
we're left with z plus 3. Good. Let's pull those guys out this way. And we get 4z squared plus 9 times z plus 3. And that 4 is sitting out in front, kind of just fell down there. Ooh, can we get this guy any further down? We do have square here, square here, but that is a plus sign. That is a sum of squares. You may not go any further because it is prime there. So this is the factored form. Good. Number 17. Ooh, look at that. It's in descending order. There are four terms, so we might end up grouping later, but don't forget to pull out that greatest common factor first. What can we pull out? It looks like a 4 and an x squared is in everything. And we're going to be left with x cubed plus 3x squared minus x um, plus 3. All righty. 4x squared x cubed plus 3x squared minus x plus 3. That looks good to me. Okay, this has 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's see if we can group this guy. Split it in half. Pull out of here and x squared. Hey, look, we got x plus 3. Pull out of here. Ooh. Well, we'd have to make that a negative. So try a negative 1 and we get x minus 3. Ooh. No grouping. So I'm going to erase those. And ta-da. We have... This is as far as we can go. There we go. Number 18. 3x squared plus 15x minus plus 5x minus 17. Um, let me see. No greatest common factor. And we have one, two, three terms. And we're here in method four to see if that works. 3 times negative 17 is a negative 51. Um, 1 and 51, that's not going to add to a positive 5. 3 and 17, I think, are the only things that can times up to negative 51. And they're not going to add to a positive 5. So this is prime. We're done.